Hi, in this video we're going to talk about top-down design and decomposition. To review, we use functions in our programs to break down our program into smaller parts to avoid repeating code and to make our programs more readable. In this lesson, we're going to talk about a strategy that helps us figure out what functions we need to write to solve a problem. So this is basically a problem-solving strategy. It's called top-down design. With top-down design, we take a big problem and we break that problem down into several smaller problems. We can then break each of those problems down into even smaller problems. We continue to do this until we have a problem that is simple and easy for us to solve. So even though we start with this big problem that may seem complicated, by breaking the problem down into smaller problems, then solving each of those smaller problems, we make our program much more manageable and our solution much more clear. So for example, if you were working on a movie, well, that's a big task. You may not even know where to start. There are several things we need to do. We need to write a script, we need to hire a cast, film the movie, edit the movie, but each of those are big problems as well. So for filming the movie, we might break that down into filming scene one, filming scene two, filming scene three. We might break the script down into similar tasks. Eventually we get to the point where the tasks are so simple that they can be solved with one function. So why do we call it decomposition? Well, decomposition means breaking your program down into small, manageable parts that are easy to understand. We decompose large, messy functions into several small, simple functions. It's all about readability. So remember this example from earlier? The program had all of our commands and it was very hard to read and understand what was going on. By breaking it down, we decompose the different parts of this program that can become functions and we have a much more readable program that can look like this. So with this program, it's easy to see what's going on. We have taken a problem of Carol going to pick up a stack of balls and broken it down. We have a much more high level view of our problem. Now instead of trying to solve the entire problem at once, we, by breaking it down, we have smaller, more manageable problems to solve. We can go in, write the pot, go to pile function, then write another function to pick up the pile. And finally, come back to the start. Each of those may need to be broken down into smaller parts as well, but at a high level, we've just solved our problem right here. So why do we do top-down design? Well, several reasons. First, it helps us to solve large, complicated problems by breaking the problem into smaller, more manageable chunks. Second, it helps us make our code more readable. When we have a program like this, it's pretty easy to understand what's going on versus a program like this where we can't really tell exactly what's going on. So finally, top-down design allows us to collaborate with others by splitting the problem into sub-problems. That can be independently solved. If I am trying to write a program with others, it's much easier to split into sub-functions. So for example, one person can write the function to go to the pile, another writes the pick up pile function, and a third can write the come back to the start function. Then we can combine them together to solve our problem. So let's take a look at top-down design in the editor. Okay, so let's take a look at top-down design in action. So what we want to do here is we want to have Carol run, jump over these hurdles, and then run to the finish line. So how do we do that? Well, if we think of it from a top-down design perspective, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to say run to hurdle. Then Carol needs to jump the hurdle. And then run to the next hurdle. So run to hurdle again. And then jump the next hurdle. So jump hurdle. And then finally run to the finish line. So we can see each of these tasks is pretty straightforward, but if I run it now, nothing happens. We haven't defined these functions yet. But if we can solve each of these functions, each of these little problems, then we'll actually solve our big problem. So let's start by looking at how do we solve this run to hurdle. So we're going to define a function called run to hurdle. And to run to a hurdle, all Carol has to do is move three times. So we're just going to say move, move, and move. 
Okay, so that'll get Carol to the hurdle. Next, we need to have Carol jump the hurdle. So we're going to define jump hurdle. Okay, and jumping the hurdle is pretty straightforward as well. We're going to turn left, move, turn right, move, turn right, move, turn left. So we're going to say turn left. And then we're going to say move. Then we're going to say oh, turn right. And then we're going to say move. We'll do another turn right. Another move. And then finally a turn left and we'll be ready to go. Okay, so then we'll be back over the hurdle. Now we're ready to go to the next one. Now, of course, we haven't defined turn right yet. And so what we have to do is kind of come up here and define turn right. So we'll go do that. So we'll say define turn right. And as we've seen, turn right can just be three left turns. So turn left, turn left, and turn left. Okay, so now we've jumped the hurdle, we've gone to the next hurdle, we've jumped the next one, and notice we don't have to redefine our functions, we can just reuse those functions. So the last problem that we have to solve is the run to the finish line. So we're going to say define run to finish. Okay, and then running to the finish is pretty straightforward. You start, Carol starts here, so one, two, three, four run, four moves, and we should be good to go. So one, two, three, and four. All right, so let's give that a try. We'll reset our code and let's give it a try. Perfect, Carol did it. We made it to the finish and that's it. So again, this is our top-down design. We've created a program that is really pretty simple right here and then we've gone through and solved each of those smaller pieces and that's helped us solve this problem really easily and now if we look at our code to read it it's pretty straightforward what carol is doing to do this code just running jumping run jump then run to the finish so now it's your turn to play around